from the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez. All along the border on a Friday night, this is exciting Imperial Valley football on vsnsports.net, the Valley Sports Network, and the source for Imperial Valley sports. For John Moreno, this is Vic Carrillo at Warren Field in the beautiful city of Brawley as the Brawley Wildcats open up hosting the Imperial Tigers here in a battle for first place as both teams come in with a 1-0 record and the in-league 5-2 overall for the Wildcats, 4-2 for the Imperial Tigers. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the voice of choice, the real deal, your friend and mine, Johnny Moe, John Moreno-Brown. Well, Vic, thanks a lot. It's great to be here in Brawley. This is our first time calling a Brawley game. And tonight, the other VSN uh, with Will Torres and Ron Rubio are doing the uh, their live broadcasting, the uh, Del Valle, Texas Conquistadores at Central Union High School versus the Spartans. But tonight, it's Brawley at Imperial. Let me get you updated on what happened in the league uh, starting this weekend. Uh, the Hopeville Vikings, 5-2 and two and 0-1 and in league play, traveled to Blythe last night to take on the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets, who are 5-2 and two and 2-0 two and in league. This was a big game in Division 5. The Vikings did their best to stop the Imperial Tigers last week, only to come up short 14-8. And Palo Verde beat Calipat 42-6 last week. The Hopeville Vikings looked to right the ship against the Yellow Jackets, but couldn't stop the high-octane offense of, the, of Palo Verde. The final score... Palo Verde 40, Hopeville 8. And thank you, Jalen Fong, for being the sideline reporter. The Central Spartans took their A game last week to the border town to beat the Calexico Bulldogs 42-6. The Spartans are 2-4 and four overall and 1-0 and oh in league play and will host the Del Valle Conquistadores out of El Paso, Texas. Del Valle comes in with a 5-1 and one record and a Cal Prep rating of 11-3, 11.3, compared to Central's negative 0.2. But central scoring machine was in mid-season form against the Bulldog defense. The Conquistadores can throw the ball with ease but must need to stop the offensive attack of the Spartans in order to win and look for a high-scoring, exciting game and catch all that action with VSN and Will Torres and Ron Rubio. But tonight, the Brawley Wildcats are 5-2, 1-0 in league, and they're the highest-rated team in the Valley. They're 4-2, uh, will host the 4-2 Imperial Tigers. The Wildcats are coming off a big win over the Southwest Eagles, 50-6. The Tigers last week beat their cross-county rivals in a nail-biter at the Carrot Capital by downing the Hopeville Vikings, 14-8. The Tigers start league and look to use their weapons in this contest and try to stop the balanced attack of the Wildcats. Both squads have experienced quarterbacks and look to establish their running games with precision. The Calexico Bulldogs travel to Southwest to take on the Eagles, in another big game in the county seat, the Bulldogs are 3-3 three three overall and 0-1 in the league and look to come out on all cylinders after last week's loss to the Spartans. The Eagles are 2-4 and 0-1, and also look to bounce back and try to keep the Bulldogs under wraps. There's a lot riding on this game as this could mean changes in the league. Both teams have similar Cal prep ratings with the Bulldogs at negative 20.6 and the Eagles at negative 21.1. There's no doubt this looks to be a close game in all respects, and Alejandra Zaragoza will be the sideline reporter for that game. And on Saturday, you can catch the Scots of Vincent Memorial, a 4-2 and 1-0 and and in league, and they're coming off a close win last week against the Mountain Empire Redhawks, 16-14. The Calipatria Hornets are 2-3 and 0-1. And and they lost to a highly ranked Palo Verde Yellow Jacket last week and look to contain the explosive offense of the Scots. This game will be played on Saturday at Central Union High School with broadcasters and VSN guest announcer Scott Gross and Cole Johnson. Their kickoff is at 6.30. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Warren Field as we talk about tonight's matchup between the Brawley Wildcats and the visiting Imperial Tigers. Imperial comes in with C.J. Turnan. They're all do everything back. He plays quarterback and running back. We're passing. He comes in with 400 Total yards on 26 completions out of 54 attempts for four touchdowns. He uh, will be alternating with Rice, Rice Vindiola, who had only a freshman, 38 passing attempts, 20 completions for 237 yards, but no TDs. On the Brawley side of the ball, Mr. Everything is Gutierrez. 
who has 628 yards in passing, 400 yards rushing. He has a 9.5 rushing average per carry with five touchdowns, and he's passed for six touchdowns. So offensively, the, the quarterback position is going to be a key one tonight, John, and it'll dictate the tempo and the quality of play for tonight's ball game. Well, you have Ethan Gutierrez, who's done an outstanding job the last several games. He can run, he can throw, and he's an excellent leader on the, on the Brawley squad. He's one of the captains, along with number 23, Isaiah Young, for the Wildcats. Young, the leading, uh, leading rusher with 463 yards, on 75 carries thus far this season. He averages 6.2 yards a carry, John, but more importantly, 10 rushing touchdowns. But Imperial counters with Jeremiah Naylor, who comes in with 169 yards total rushing, two touchdowns. He averages four yards a carry. He's more inside the red zone, John, when they need a couple of yards, like three yards in a cloud of dust, from the Ohio State days under Coach Woody Hayes, that's what he gives him. He's a good old-fashioned, hard-nosed runner between the hash marks and between the tackles. And the Wildcats won the toss. They have elected to defer, and um, the Tigers will be receiving the ball. Tonight's referees representing the Imperial Valley Football Officials Association. The white hat will be J.J. Jackson. He'll be teamed up with Sean McLaughlin, Gabe Castro, Mike Walla, and Randy Ross. An outstanding crew, one of the three crews, full crews, that uh, comes under the direction of John Seaman, the president of the Referees Association. So, John, a beautiful night for football. The breeze is crisp. It's cooling down. What's your take? Well, I think we're going to see a good game. We've got an ex uh, experienced quarterbacks on both sides. But I think Brawley may have the upper hand. They've had a tough preseason, and uh, they've shown that they can score a lot of points. Well, Brawley opened up the season scrimmaging Scripps Ranch, and uh, Scripps Ranch with her 6'6 quarterback threw 45 passes in that scrimmage. He's the leading passer in San Diego County. They're undefeated, and they're ranked eighth among the over 100 high schools in San Diego County. But Brawley also played the number four ranked team, Mater Day, out of the Chula Vista area, and Fallbrook. So Brawley's had a tough preseason schedule. They have one common opponent, and that being Fallbrook. Brawley beat them in overtime, and the Imperial Tigers lost a heartbreaker to Fallbrook. So as the band's taking the field, we get set. set David Shaw comes in in his third season, second season. His uh, overall record against the Brawley Wildcats is 0-2. You had the, pa the pandemic season in the spring and will stop as the national anthem is being played. From the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez. Out of the gun, looking over the middle, way deep. 
Pass is caught by number 21. Touchdown. From the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez, all along the border on a Friday night, this is exciting Imperial Valley football. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Valley Sports Network, the source for Imperial Valley Sports and Bulldog Media 2021. As we welcome you to Warren Field here in Brawley, California, as they host the visiting Imperial Tigers five miles down the road. And now we welcome the voice of choice, your friend and mine, Johnny Moe, John Moreno Brown. Vic, this is a good game. We've got Imperial, we've got Brawley. This is a classic in the making. Both teams looking for another win. And the Tigers have been almost unstoppable as they've been beating their last three or four or five opponents. But the but the Wildcats have the tradition, they've got the they've got the players, they've got the talent, and my money's on Brawley. Well, John, they've always said the road to the Imperial Valley Championship goes through Brawley. But for the last four years, under David Rookie Pena, the Central Spartans have wrested the crown away from Brawley, always decided the final game of the regular season, the Bell game. Uh, Imperial wants to enter that uh, and make it a threesome, a triumvirate of football powers. And under young head coach David Shaw, in his second full season here as the Imperial Tiger coach, he wants to have a major say on the outcome of the rankings in Imperial Valley football. And getting set to kick off for the Wildcats, number 18, George Otto. And back to receive, we've got Dominic Suarez and Alejandro Perez uh, returning the punt, uh, the kickoff. Mm -hmm. Now, Brawley likes to open up with onside kicks, John. Traditionally, under Coach John South, they practice two to three days out of the practice week on special team drills, uh, block punts, punt recoveries, kickoff recoveries, etc. And so he says anytime during the game, particularly at the beginning, he wants to try the onside kick or a pooch kick. So rather than wait for it later in the game when it's expected. So the element of surprise here as we get underway. And George Hotto with an end over end kick will go there to uh, Dominic Suarez coming this way at the 20. Turns it up the field at the 30, 35 and gets thrown out of bounds by number three for the Wildcats. That's Noah Gonzalez as the Imperial Tiger offense will be coming on the field. Brawley defensively will go with the defensive front of Anthony Arriaga, Bernie Bustamante, and Alan Carrillo, the leading tackler on the Brawley roster with 40 tackles. The other defensive lineman is Levangelis Pittman, who goes at 5'9", 240 pounds. The outside linebackers are Matthew Moreno and Tanner Carranza. The inside linebackers, Chris Camilo, Mario Cáceres. The cornerbacks are Daniel Camilo and uh, Isaiah Young, the free safety, Aiden Torres, the strong safety, Gilbert Corrales. Vindiola hands it off to Tiernan. Tiernan will take it up to the 44. So offensively, the Tigers go with number seven, the freshman, Reese Vindiola, at quarterback, 6'1", 165 pounds. He's joined by number 24, Seth Shaw in the backfield, along with number six, Chris Christopher C.J. Tiernan. The wideouts are Jesse Nichols, Dominic Suarez, and Alejandro Perez, the leading pass catcher for the Tigers. Second and about five for the Tigers at their own 44. Shotgun snap, hands off to Tiernan. Nothing there, and he stopped at the line. Tackled by number 72, Alan Carrillo. So it'll be third 
and a long five for the Tigers. The ball resting at the Tiger 44 yard line as they're going right to left on your visual screen. Naylor comes in now in the backfield. He's got three receivers to the right. Reese Vindiola out of the shotgun. He'll take the snap, looking to the right. Fires it in the flat. Pass is caught by number four, Alejandro Perez. He'll get enough for a first down. Perez came into the game with 16 uh, receptions on the season, and he adds to his total right there. So a first and 10, ball at midfield for the Tigers in the first quarter. No score. So Reese Vindiola out of the shotgun with three receivers to the left. Naylor in the backfield. He'll keep it. Stops. Goes to the left side. And that's CJ Tiernan. 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 Yeah. We'll see double duty at the quarterback position, John. He'll line up in shotgun formation. He'll line up alongside the uh, quarterback, Vindiola. They'll have him split out. They'll have him selling tickets out at the front gate. And, and, uh, and as you say, John, warming up the popcorn in the concession stand. So Tiernan picks up eight on that play. The ball at the 42 going in. Tiernan's back in there with Naylor and Swatis split to the left. C.J. Tiernan out of the shotgun. Empty backfield. And he'll take it. Keeps it. Goes up the field and down the far sideline to 10. And inside the 10-yard line, C.J. Tiernan on an excellent run. Keeps the football from his shotgun position and moves the ball way down into Brawley territory. While running behind the blocking of number 58, Andres Gastelum and the center, Jose Apodaca, Tiernan was able to get into the defensive secondary and then he juked and faked to his right and sidestepped the potential tackler, Daniel Camilo, and was able to get to the outside, running along in front of the Tiger bench and advance the ball into the red zone, just shy of the 10 yard line. Now we've got a three, three receivers here. And that is Reese Vindiola to Naylor. Naylor has nowhere to run, nowhere to hide as Alan Carrillo along with Corrales in to make the stop. And you, assisting on the play was number 31, Chris Camilo, who comes in with 40 tackles on the season, 15 solo tackles, and he was there to assist on, the, on that stop on Naylor. So it's a second and 11 for the Tigers. Well, you know, John, once they get inside the, the red zone, the field shortens and narrows where they're not, they don't have a lot of room for the pass patterns to be developed. Tiernan out of the shotgun. Looks to Naylor. Naylor go to the right. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown Imperial in this first series of play. The Tigers take it from the 39-yard line and score first. Well, faced with a second and 10 on the 11-yard line, John, Naylor took the handoff from Turnin and was able to run behind the blocking of Diego Valencia and Andres Gastelum on the right side and bull his way into the end zone as we get ready for the Ethan Gonzalez Lopez point after attempt. The snap and the set, and it's got enough. No, it's no good. So with that, and 7.55 to go first quarter, the Tigers are up 6-0. to zero. La Resaca has the absolute best Mexican-style seafood chabelas and, of course, best clamatos anywhere. Try the Sonora Fusion in El Centro for the best cuts of aged beef. La Resaca at 221 Campillo Street in Calexico and at 6th and State in El Centro. And listen to the Que Pasa Calexico podcast for candid conversations with many of Imperial Valley personalities. Jose Alejos has been hosting the podcast for five years and has interviewed many people. Stay tuned for the next Que Pasa Calexico with Jose Alejos. Learn, grow, and make the Imperial Valley a better place. The last podcast was with our own county supervisor, Jesus Cachu Escobar. 
And by Fred Miramontes, under sheriff, reminding you that you can start a neighborhood watch program in your rural area. The sheriff's department, Crime Prevention Union, can assist you by meeting with you and your neighbors. Call them at 442-265-2000 for more information. Support your neighborhood watch program. For the Brawley Wildcats, deep to receive number four, freshman Brandon Porras, and number six, Daniel Camilo, a junior, signing inside their 10-yard line, four and six, John. End over end kick, won't go far, and it'll be fumbled and touched, and it looks like Imperial may have recovered. And this is uncharacteristic of a Brawley Wildcat coach team by John Self uh, to start the ball game, John. First giving up that, the, the long runs to the CJ Turnin and then to I, Jeremiah Naylor for the touchdown. And now here to mishandle a kickoff early in the ball game with 7.52 remaining in the first quarter. If you just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, the Tigers jumped out to an early 6-0 lead, the point after attempt by Ethan Gonzalez went awry, and as a result, the Wildcats find themselves down by a score of 6-0. So it's first and 10 from the Wildcat 25, and you have Tiernan in the backfield with Vindiola. Trips left. Vindiola airs it out. And it's intercepted by, by Brandon Dan Porras. Is it Porras or Camilo? I believe it was uh, number six. That's Daniel Camilo adding to his interception total. He came into the game with three interceptions on the season, and he just made his fourth. So just like that, Imperial turns it over, and the Wildcats will take over inside the, at their own 20. Subscribe to the VSN YouTube channel and follow VSN on Instagram. So the Wildcats offense now in control, first and 10 at their own 20, with Ethan Gutierrez under center. First handoff is to Isaiah Young, Young who will go right side, picking up almost five. Young comes into the game with 75 rushes for 463 yards, a 6.2 average and 10 touchdowns gutierrez also the leading rusher for the uh, or the second leading rusher with 400 yards on 44 carries uh nine a nine and a half yard average with five touchdowns to his credit so they handle the bulk of the running and gutierrez a dual threat with his arm second and five four the wildcats with another handoff to Isaiah Young. Isaiah will pick up three. Running behind the blocking of tackle Julius Diaz and Levangelis Pittman on the left side. The center is Brian Porras, six foot, 230 pound center. The right side is Jonathan Garcia and Anthony Arriaga. The tight end, Robert Platt, wearing jersey number 17, only a sophomore, six footer. 175 pounds, an outstanding football player. Third and three from the 27. Gutierrez. Hands off again, this time to Carranza. Carranza will get the first down, and they'll move the chains. Carranza with a 10-point average. Ten, comes in with 13 carries, 130 yards. He had his first 100-yard rushing game against the Southwest Eagles last week, and two touchdowns to his credit. So the Wildcats with a first and 10 at their own 30-yard line. Gutierrez under center, running the ball, keeping it, turns it up the field, and tries to jump over a defender. He'll pick up five. And that was Seth Shaw leading the defense there, making that tackle as the Tigers go with Brian Vasquez, Victor Sesenia, Wolfgang Horner, and Diego Valencia in the front. The linebackers are Daniel Riesgo, Ethan Reeves, Kai Bishop, and Aiden Shields, who's now wearing jersey number 88 tonight instead of his usual 53, along, and also Jeremiah Naylor. Second and five from the 35 with Brawley. Devin Bishop and Seth Shaw, the defensive backs. He's got trips to the near side. Ethan Gutierrez now out of the shotgun.
was going to hand it off, but decided to keep it and goes for that extra yardage. Well, Gutierrez comes into the game, John, with 83 passing attempts and 46 yards, 46 completions for 628 yards and six touchdowns. But as a quarterback, he's kept the ball or called his number 44 times for 400 yards for 9.5 average and five TDs. As I mentioned, they'll pound the interior of the line of scrimmage with Isaiah Young and Carranza, and then Gutierrez will read and pull the ball out like he just did just there and, and he's scamper to the outside. And he's running the option beautifully down the far, the near sideline. There's the flag, the 25-20, 15-10-5, touchdown, Brawley. But wait a minute, it may come back. And it will come back. Well, it doesn't, it nullifies that outstanding run by Gutierrez, who has a 72-yard touchdown run to his credit, but uh, he was denied pay dirt this time by that block, illegal block, and so J.J. Jackson, the head referee wearing the white hat, will give the, the call right now as he's looking to explain it to the Imperial bench. So running the option beautifully, it's a holding call against the Wildcats is Ethan Gutierrez, Vic. Well, John Brawley runs the wing T, where it utilizes the strength of a running quarterback who's also a dual threat and the power running of their running backs. That's what they like to develop. They have an outstanding one in an Isaiah Young, the son of Brandon Young, a former Brawley great who later parlayed his talents, earning a football scholarship to St. Mary's in the Bay Area. And now he's assisting John Self here on the sidelines as their offensive coach. So Brawley gets a first down. They'll spot the ball at the 40. And J.J. Jackson is calling what? An official's timeout? No, they're, they're coming and they're going to start to play. So here, first quarter, 6-0. The key Imperial. Brawley players are Gutierrez at quarterback. In the backfield, Young and Carranza. The wideouts are Washington and Camilo. The tight end is number 17, Robert Platt. And they're still conferring down there. The key defenders for Brawley are Imperial, and keep an eye on them, are Kai Bishop, the grandson of John Bishop, who was a longtime legendary coach here for the Brawley Wildcats, Matt Moreno, Zach Ray, Jeremiah Naylor. So first and 10, Brawley Wildcats at and their own 40-yard. And number three. They had some issues with the scoreboard. Looks like they're all taken care of now. So Mesa, his responsibility is the tight end, number 17, Robert Platt. Young, but didn't fool anybody and doesn't get anywhere on that handoff by Gutierrez. And that was number 29, Zach Ray, who comes into the game with 35 tackles, 20 of them solo tackles, making the stop there on Young. So the Wildcats now face with a second down. 10 yards to go, not one yard. Give a shout out to Charlie Alcantar running the clock for the Wildcats here at Warren Field. Hand off to the Camilo. Camilo will try to turn it up the field and will be stopped around four yards from the line of scrimmage. And he was tripped up by number, number 10 of the Tigers, that was David Camacho, a 165-pound senior. So a third and about seven for the Wildcats here in the first quarter. Well, John, do you think we'll see a play action pass with uh, two wideouts here? The tight end, John Platt, Robert Platt on the far side. And we have Gutierrez under center and he'll run the option he'll keep it this time tries to turn it up the field gets a couple but hesitated for a bit there and that may have cost him that extra yardage well number 55 kai bishop was the first one to break up the play and then number 70 wolfgang horner 
came in to make the final stop on Gutierrez as we get set for a, a Carranza punt. So Tanner Carranza and back to receive is Seth Shaw standing at his 25. Oh, it's a penalty there with the punter. There could be a roughing the kicker. Well, Kai Bishop is talking with J.J. Jackson. I was looking in this direction. I was no, following was the punt. Part, was, he almost blocked it, but uh, he tried to. Let's see what the call is. Let's see if he picks up the flag. J.J. Jackson is a, is a reasonable man, John. If you make him an offer that he can't refuse. <laughs> Roughing the kicker, so it'll be a first down. And the Wildcats will have another set of, of downs to move the ball forward here in the first quarter. 2.09 to go. Well, a good defensive effort there by Kai Bishop. And as a result, a uh, penalty called on that, roughing the, the punter. And so the Wildcats now cross midfield to the 48-yard line here in the near hash mark in all blue uniforms with chrome yellow trim. Double doubles. First and 10. Gutierrez out of the shotgun. Young in the backfield. A shotgun snap. He lets Young have it, so he'll pick up about four. Running behind the blocking of Julius Diaz, number 55, and Lavangelis Pittman, the left guard. Young was able to pick up a couple of tough yards, make it a second and about seven. Gutierrez out of the shotgun with double doubles. Second and about seven. He keeps the football, turns it up the field, and probably gets a first down. Gutierrez able to escape the pursuit of number 73, Victor Sesenia, six foot, 225 pounds, just came up one step shy of making a shoestring tackle on the fleet, Ethan Gutierrez. Gutierrez able to add to his rushing total, picking up an important first down, keeping this drive alive with 134 remaining here in the first quarter. Imperial six, Brawley zero. Trips right. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Gutierrez in the shotgun. Gives it to Young. Young can find only a couple there. Takes it to about the 35. So it'll bring up a second and long. That was number 32 for the Tigers making the tackle. That's Mario Cáceres. Excuse well, me. That's uh, Wildcats utilizing no huddle, Vic. So again, trips that right. Was, that was Pablo Moreno making the tackle. Looking in that direction. Pass is caught there by number 17. Platt. That is Robert Platt. And he'll get a first yard, maybe. I think so. They're going to move the chains. They'll spot it at the 26. Platt, as a tight end, has eight receptions in the season. That was his ninth. A 9.9 .9 average and one touchdown to his credit. First and 10 with Gutierrez out of the shotgun. Trips left. Isaiah Young in the backfield. Washington here to the near side. Split. And throws it low, and it looks like Platt gets another catch. And they'll move it inside the 20 into the red zone, Vic. If that pass would have been elevated a little bit, Platt might have had some running room to get inside the red zone. But nevertheless, an outstanding catch, a fine, dis fine display of skill, and a pickup of seven yards on the play. So it'll be second and three inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. So trips right. Gutierrez in the shotgun. And Young up the middle. There he goes inside the 10, Vic. Picks up that first down as he is forward progress. In other words, he wasn't stopped on the initial contact and kept on moving the pile forward. So he gets inside the 10, 
at the nine yard line as time is called. Tonight's ball game being brought to you by. And that's the end of the first quarter, Vic. Thank you, John. Havens and Sons Trucking is located at 603 East Main in El Central, specializing in gravel, rock, and stone, and for all your landscaping materials and needs. It's Havens Landscaping. Let us know what you need for your next project. Johnny's Burritos. Eat what you love at Johnny's Burritos, located in Brawley, El Centro, and Imperial. Open Monday through Saturday. Dippy Duck IISD's official safety mascot has been teaching children water safety for more than 50 years, but now he reminds you to lower your thermostat to 78. And now that the weather's cool, maybe you won't need to do that. The perfect time for you to refinance, maybe now. Call George Nava of Nava Commercial Capital and Real Estate. Discuss your options. George Nava is there to help you at Nava Commercial Capital and Real Estate. And by Sanders Incorporated Architecture and Engineering. Architecture and Engineering is our expertise, a leader in design, development, and delivery. Sanders Incorporated is proud is a proud supporter of Imperial Valley football, and we wish all of our Imperial Valley schools a safe and successful season. And by Arctic Air Conditioning and Heating. We know that having the right people on the job is just as important as choosing the best equipment. Our York trained professionals provide you with top quality equipment, skilled installation, and an expert analysis of your comfort needs. Arctic Air Conditioning in El Centro. So we've got the second quarter under play. Brawley has a football. They're going in on our first and goal inside the 10 yard line. So welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the second quarter and the voice of choice, John Moreno. Ethan Gutierrez, hands off, 24, turns it up. That is Gilbert Corrales, John. Corrales gets about five. Corrales making the most of his opportunity to get a carry as the workload is usually handled by Isaiah Young and uh, Ethan Gutierrez. And so a wrinkle thrown at the Tiger defense that's led by Kai Bishop, Pablo Moreno, Zach Ray, and Jeremiah Naylor, their outstanding quartet of linebackers. So a second and goal deep in Imperial territory at about the two. Young takes it in for a touchdown. Brawley for a couple of yards out. Isaiah Young. Young coming into the ballgame with 10 touchdowns to his credit on the ground. Picks up his 11th here in the season uh, as the Brawley Wildcats tie the score. And we get set for a George Arro point after attempt. He wears jersey number 18. Snap set and it is good. So the Wildcats are up by one here in the second quarter. Reach Air Medical Service, medical air transport. Patient care is our number one priority, assuring calmness, security, and comfort. Recognized for our compassionate, medically effective methods for patient transport. Fast, safe, reliable. Reach Air Medical Service, modern day heroes. Thank you, Donnie Wharton and your team for providing the best service around. Commercial and industrial equipment supplier Ojeda Industries is a proud to sponsor the Valley Sports Network. Ojeda Industries was voted in Pearl Valley Press, Reader's Choice for the best farming equipment provider in 2019. You want to stay up to date with the latest in Pearl Valley Sports coverage? Follow us on Twitter at Valley Sports Net and make sure you have post notifications turned on. As the, Tiger, as the Wildcats are getting set to kick off. So you have Dominic Suarez and Seth Shaw. As George, you have a pooch kick right here. George Otto, and that'll be caught. By Devin Mesa. And it'll go out of bounds right at the 27. So, John, we get set for the Tiger offense coming out. Offensively, left to right, they'll go with Diego Valencia, number 78. Number 58, Andres Gastelum, the guard. The center is Jose Apodaca, 5'10", 290-pound sophomore. Offensive line uh, right guard is number 70, Wolfgang Horner, 6'2", 305-pounder. And number 56, Ethan Reeves. The backfield will have, I is it Reese 
Vindola, no, it's, it's CJ, CJ Turnin, and alongside him will be number 23. Jeremiah Naylor, a first and 10 as the Tigers will take over after that kickoff. Naylor gets the handoff. No, it's no, CJ. He pulled it in and pulled it out, but gets nothing, maybe a yard. And making the stop for the Wildcats was number 25. Matthew Moreno in his linebacking position. So a second and nine for the Tigers. Tiernan and Vindiola in there, but Tiernan now will be set in the backfield as the shotgun snap will more than likely go to Reese Vindiola, the freshman. Tiernan with the handoff, here he comes but doesn't get anywhere as that Brawley defense is really putting a stop. So no gain on the play. Brawley defensively comes in with Chris Camilo, number 31, the leading tackler is only a sophomore. He has 40 tackles along with his brother, Daniel Camilo, with 18 tackles and Robert Platt with 25. Third and eight. Viendiola lets it go. Pass is caught there, number 25. Dominic Suarez in the left flat. He'll get that, almost to get that first down. He caught that pass in front of Corrales, number 24, for the Tigers. So fourth Excuse and short. For the Wildcats. Fourth and short, and somebody's jumping off sides. And it'll be against the Wildcats, giving the Tigers a first and 10. They'll move the ball up. So defensively, the Wildcats will go with Anthony Arriaga, Bernie Bustamante, Alan Carrillo, Lavangelis Pittman. The linebackers are Matthew Moreno and outside linebacker Tanner Carranza. Another outside linebacker is number 17, Robert Platt. First and 10, handoff. Tiernan gets nine to midfield. And he's brought down by the free safety, Aiden Torres, along with inside linebacker Chris Camilo, number 31. The cornerbacks are Daniel Camilo and Isaiah Young, and the strong safety is Gilbert Corrales, an outstanding defensive crew, John. So second and short. You can do a lot of things with a second and short. And you hand it off to Naylor, who'll get that first down, move the chains for the Tigers. He Na is now in Wildcat territory. Naylor averaging four yards a carry, and he picks up an important two there for the first down and an additional two to move those chains. So the ball now at the 46-yard line of the Tigers. Uh, uh, Wildcats, excuse me. 8.31 to go, second quarter. First and 10. Imperial at the Wildcat 46. So the Tigers have a lot of field to work with, John, from the 50 into the 20. Naylor gets nothing. Losing yardage. We'll move it back to about the 50. Correction, the 49. So Naylor couldn't find anything on the left side, Vic. It'll bring up a second and about 13. For the Tigers. Shotgun formation. Reese Vindiola flushed out of the pocket and lowers his shoulders, tries to get to about the 45, but is thrown out of bounds. And he'll salvage a couple of yards there, Vic. Maybe get to the original line of scrimmage. Bring up a third and 10 with 7.25 to go in the second quarter. Third and 10 at the 46. Tigers with Naylor in the backfield. Take the man in motion, little screen pass. And nothing as the screen pass was caught there by number 29, 
That's uh, Zach Ray, but number 67, Bernie Bustamante, a defensive tackle, wasn't fooled on that play, John, as he just wrestled him down for a loss there, so it'll be fourth and 11. And the punt team for the Tigers are coming out of the field. So you have Ethan Gonzalez Lopez, 6'2", 165 pounder, as back to receive is number six, Daniel Camilo, along with number 24, Gilbert Corrales, the up back. Nice end over end kick, and it won't be returned. It'll go out of bounds somewhere Around inside the, the 15-yard line. So with 6.09 remaining here in the second quarter, the Wildcats leading 7-6 to six, will take over deep inside their own territory. Your county supervisor, District 1, Jesus Escobar, is a proud sponsor of VSN. And as a committed public servant, Jesus Escobar would like to thank his constituents for District 1 and wishes all Valley teams a great season. The Dom Team Real Estate Company serves the entire Imperial Valley with a full array of services, limited not only to residential, but including farmland, commercial, and industrial ground. For honest and reliable real estate advice, it's the Dom Team at 337-8600. Need a job? You need to hire someone who needs a job. Give Keystone HR a call at 357-2929 for all your staffing needs. They specialize in payroll services, part-time and full-time staffing. That's Keystone HR and Calexico, proud sponsor of Imperial Valley Football. Well, the Wildcats will go with Julius Diaz and Evangelist Pittman on the left side. The center is Brian Porras. The right side is Jonathan Garcia and Anthony Arriaga. At quarterback, John, they have Ethan Gutierrez. He's joined by Isaiah Young, along with fullback Tanner Carranza. The wideouts are Make Makai Washington and Daniel Camilo. The tight end is number 17, Robert Platt. So what so, happened, a penalty already? I'm not sure. But they're moving the ball in favor of the Wildcats. And they're going to spot it right about the 25. So a first and 10 for Brawley at the 25. Gutierrez under center. He'll have three receivers here to the near side. Young in the backfield. Runs the option. Pass. And that was a backward pass, John, to, number to Daniel six. Camilo. Daniel Camilo. And the Tigers were not fooled on that play. And, but they'll pick up four yards nonetheless. Kai Bishop was there to make the stop along with number 72 of the Tigers. That being it was 70, number Wolfgang Horner. My correction. Second and seven. Brawley. Inside their 30. Hands it off. Carranza finds a lot of room. Matthew 45. Moreno. Matthew Moreno, 30, 25, all the way down. Touchdown, Brawley. Matthew Moreno. Running behind the blocking of jo Julius Diaz and Lavangelis Pittman taking the ball from the 26 yard line, running off tackle, a power play, and Sprinting up the middle of the field for another touchdown for Brawley with 5'11". Corrales was the runner there, ladies and gentlemen. So Brawley now with a 13-6 lead as we get set for the George Haro point after attempt. And it is good. So with 5'11 to go in the second quarter, 14-6. Wildcats on top. At Imperial Printers, we're ready to help you with your next project from business cards to yard signs and everything in between. Give us a call at 352-1300 for a quote or any questions you might have. Located at 430 West Main in El Centro, Imperial Printers, what can we print for you today? The Town Pump Steakhouse is open Tuesday through Saturday. Call us at 344-3633 for reservations. We're at 200 West Main in Westmoreland. The Town Pump serves up a delicious and savory steak and lobster dinner. 
combine experience of Valley tradition for over 50 years. And by Esqueda Realty, need real estate services? Thinking of buying or selling a house? Wondering what your property is worth? Call. Get top dollar. Call Mark Esqued at 357-9707. Esqued Realty, the mark of excellence. Hotto getting set to kick off for the Wildcats. Pooched at the 30. That's and, Mesa. And he'll take a knee right at the 31. So the Devin Tigers. Mesa, John. So the Tigers will take over first and 10 at their own 31. So the Wildcats have really capitalized when they've had the ball, and they've shown that they they can run. They can open up that running game, Vic. But more importantly, their defense has been tenacious after giving up that first score of the ball game to Jeremiah Naylor. And now they come out with Anthony Arriaga, Bernie Bustamante, Alan Carrillo, the, the grandson of Gilbert Carrillo from the class of 59 of Calexico, a longtime city employee. Levangelis Pittman and Matthew Moreno, the outside linebacker. We'll give you the other linebackers after this play. Vindiola out of the shotgun. Hands it off to Naylor. No, I'm sorry. That's not Naylor. That's number six. CJ CJ Tiernan. So they do double duties and switch rather freely in the quarterback position for the Tigers. In to make the stop was number 32, Mario Cáceres, along with number 72, Alan Carrillo. The outside linebackers are Tanner Carranza and Robert Platt. Inside linebackers are Chris Camilo along with Mario Cáceres. Cornerbacks are Daniel Camilo and Isaiah Young. Free safety is Aiden Torres. And the strong safety is Gilbert Corrales, who had that 84-yard touchdown scamper to get Brawley to extend their lead. Second and five for the Tigers. Vindiola. Tiernan doesn't find anything and goes around. Number six, Daniel Camilo making the initial contact low. And then number 32, Mario Cáceres coming in to finish him off with the assist. So a yard gain by that uh, handoff to Tiernan will bring up a third and about three for the Tigers. Well, they can't hit the panic button yet, John. They're still in this ball game. They started out their opening drive with a balanced attack. Let's see if they get back to it with Reese Vindiola, the freshman signal caller in shotgun formation. Oh, movement on the line. And we'll see what the call is. It is against the defense. It's in lining up in the neutral zone, so it'll be a five-yard penalty. And they it'll needed, go. They it'll, needed three yards for a first down. So they got five that time. They'll get the first down, so the Tigers with a first and ten at their own 43. So 3.46 to go, second quarter, 14-6. Brawley here in this IVL Classic. Vindiola to Naylor. Couldn't find it, anything there. As the Brawley defense just stopped any kind of gain. Well, he couldn't esca escape. The clutches of number 77, Levangelis Pittman, 5'9", 240 pounds. We have an update for the Calexico Southwest game. They're tied at 7 in the second quarter. Timeout is called. Imperial will call a timeout with 3.04 to go in the second quarter. Up. Brawley's up 14-6. Have you earned your varsity letter? We'll get you your letterman jacket started today at lettermansandbros.com. Call us at 693-5034. That's 760-693-5034. Ask for Dan at Lettermans and Bro. The Robinson Ford family is proud to support breast cancer awareness. We pray for the many people in our Imperial Valley who have suffered from this grave illness. Stomp out breast cancer in the month of October. Robinson Ford Sales reminds you that due to the chip shortage, new car inventory is increasing slower than usual. And for the most in-depth local and regional news and the best high school coverage, uh, sports coverage around, check out the Calexico Chronicle and the Holtville Tribune in print 
or online at the all-new CalexicoChronicle.com, chronicling our community border region and beyond since 1904. So, a second and ten for the Tigers. Back at their own 43. Three minutes to go in this first half. Brawley responds with Chris Camilo, the inside linebacker, and Mario Cáceres, two of the leading tacklers for the Wildcats. Vindiola has time in the gun, is flushed out, and brought down, pushed out of bounds after picking up five yards on a keeper. That was number 42, Tanner Carranza, with that high tackle up around the head area, and that's where that penalty flag came from with from the white hat, J.J. Jackson. But you know, John, a play, passing play, takes, if you can't get it off in three seconds, it's too late, because you can't ask the line to block beyond that, and that's what forced uh, the freshman quarterback, Vindiola, out of the pocket and looking for running room. Check out Top Notch Barbershop at 317 Wake Avenue in El Centro. Open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 8 to 9, and Sundays, 8 to 5 where our regular haircuts are always 20 bucks, and Wednesdays is our $15 special. Military senior discounts offered every day. Well, you know, the offensive line of Diego Valencia, Andres Gastelum, Jose Apodaca, Wolfgang Horner, and Ethan Rees has to hold off the strong rush by Anthony Arriaga, Bernie Bustamante, Alan Carrillo, and Lavangelis Pittman of the Wildcats. First and 10. Hand off to Tiernan, left side. There he goes for a pickup of four yards. And the tackle was made by number 24 of the Wildcats. That was Matthew Moreno. Or correction, Gilbert Corrales. Moreno's 25. Moreno, any relation to you, John? Probably, but I don't know. <laughs> Second and seven. Tigers at the Wildcat 34. Naylor in the backfield with Tiernan out of the shotgun. Tiernan will keep it. There he goes to the 30. Pick up a four. So the Tigers utilizing CJ Tiernan now. Well, that was Gilbert Corrales again from his linebacking position making that tackle. And no huddle offense for the Tigers. Naylor back there with Tiernan. Nichols split to the near side. Oh, there's jumping off sides there. And that's number 67, the defensive tackle, Bernie Bustamante. That'll give uh, the Tigers another first down, Vic. Who either the cadence call of the Imperial quarterback has him confused or he's anticipating the snap count, but... He was either drawn off sides, but nevertheless, it's a five-yard infraction, John, as they move further deep into the green zone at the 24-yard line. We can start calling colors like red when we get to the 20. 1.30 to go, second quarter. The Tigers are driving at the Wildcat 24. Tiernan and Naylor in the backfield. Nichols here to the split to the near side. Here comes Naylor. And can't find the hole there. One yard gain. Number 72, Alan Carrillo, the nose tackle, there, the nose guard there to make the stop there. Pittman, Bustamante also rounding out the interior. The outside linebackers are Moreno and Carranza. Inside linebackers, Chris Camilo and Mario Cáceres. Second and nine. Vindiola back in, uh, in the shotgun. Looking left side. A man is open, incomplete. As heavily guarded there by number five for the Wildcats. And that pass was intended for Dominic Suarez. Makai Washington, 5'10", 160 pounds. Was on him like flies on honey, John. And we got a, an update with the Bulldogs and the Eagles. Bulldogs just scored another touchdown, so they're up. 13-7, I guess they're awaiting the point after. So with 39 seconds remaining here in the second quarter, time has been called. 
Tonight's Mar game being brought to you by... Marianne Valenzuela is your State Farm Insurance agent in the Imperial Valley, specializing in auto, home, business, property, and more. And with over 20 years of experience, Marianne will help figure out what coverage you need to take control of your financial future. Like a good neighbor, she's located at 122 Main in Brawley. Marianne Valenzuela, State Farm, your insurance agent. By Ivy Welding and Mechanical, industrial welding contractor for all your heavy metal needs. Ivy Welding incorporates welding techniques to build high quality systems that exceed client expectations. Call Fred Baeza at 760 Weld. 76482 Weld. Subscribe to our VSN YouTube channel and follow VSN on Instagram. And for the best burgers in town, it's Burgers and Beer at 260 North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. Open seven days a week and serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Burgers and Beer is the place to watch the big game. Great food and great service. That's Burgers and Beer. And you want to stay up to date with the latest Imperial Valley sports coverage? Follow us on Twitter at Valley Sports Net. And make sure you have post notifications turned on. So a third and nine for the Tigers. Reese Vindiola in the backfield with Naylor. Nichols. There goes Naylor. He finds a hole to the left side. He'll take it to the 16-yard line, Vic. Almost picked up a first down, John. He might be shy. Picked up eight yards on the play. It, it was a third and nine. So now it's a fourth and one. The clock is still running under 20 seconds. They didn't call a timeout. So they'll probably bring in Luis uh, Gutierrez Lopez, Gonzalez Lopez, Ethan, to come in. So that would, uh, to, to kick they, the extra they're point? They're stop it at three seconds. So a point six. 33 yard field goal attempt if they're going to allow Ethan uh, Gonzalez Lopez try the field goal. Well, it's, it, they're faced with a fourth and two, John. And uh, the way the Brawley defense has been bending but not breaking, other than the offsides and fractions, giving the Tigers additional yardage, this is a wise decision by David Shaw to, cut, to go for the field goal. He has an outstanding kicker in Gonzalez Lopez, and you don't want to come in empty-handed going into halftime. So we got a halftime score, Calexico and Southwest with Calexico up 13 to seven. They're gonna try for the field goal. Like I said, it's a 33 yard attempt. So CJ Turner with a hold, Apodaca with a snap. And he'll split the uprights, and that'll take us into halftime with a score, 14-9. So the ball Brawley was Wildcats. kicked from the 27-yard line? It was at, no, it, it was at the 16-yard line. So you had 17. We'll be right back with our halftime interview with Eric Reyes. Reducing energy use during the summer is more important than ever. This summer, IID encourages you to do your part by setting your thermostat to 78 degrees or higher, avoiding the use of large appliances between 4 and 9 p.m., and turning off all unnecessary lighting. But there's more. IID provides a number of summer energy saving opportunities to help you make the most of your energy savings efforts. Check out our tips and energy saving guides at IID.com. Let's work together to stay cool and save energy this summer.
whether you're looking to purchase or sell, your next home awaits. Give the Dom team a call. With over 50 years of experience and over 100 years in the Imperial Valley, Andy and Doug can help you find the right home at the right price fast. Visit us online at www.thedomteam.com and let Andrew and Doug find the perfect home for you. Call today, 760-337-8600. From the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez, all along the border on a Friday night, it's exciting Imperial Valley football brought to you live on valleysportsnetwork.net with Bulldog Media 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our halftime show as we welcome the legendary football great in the early 80s, specifically from the class of 1982, Eric Reyes. But more importantly, we'll talk about Eric Reyes, the man, the character, the legend, <laughs> as he's very active, not only in the Brawley community, but the whole region, Imperial Valley wide, as a community activist, a, so a social activist, but more importantly, a friend of everyone. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Eric Reyes. Thank you, Victor. I really want to appreciate uh, you inviting me, you and John Moreno, VSN with Will Torres and everyone else. Muchas gracias por todos que me invitaron. I just want to say it's fantastic to be back here on Broadway Union High School Field. Uh, you didn't mention that I am a Hall of Famer for, for the Coaches Hall of Fame. I was inducted in the very second class of uh, all the Hall of Fame. So that was really important to me in those days. Well, Eric, that was my second question, but I, <laughs> I, 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 I knew you would include it as part of the introductions. But we talked about your football exploits yeah. at the beginning, 1982. Right. You, you were inducted into the Hall of Fame yeah. representing the Brawley Wildcats. Uh, you played with Will Torres. Will and Torres. Tell us a little bit about the 80s and Brawley and their dominance mm. in the Imperial Valley. I think it was the Desert Valley League game. Yeah, Desert Valley League. I'm going to say it's a continuance of all the great tradition of Brawley. Union High School football, there was a long tradition in the 20s, 30s, 40s. But if you look back at the golden era with Bob Farrell and Hal McNaughton, the 50s and the 60s, they won a, a couple of CIF championships, went to CIF championship games a few times. And from there, like I said, it wasn't just coach Bob Farrell, but it was also Hal McNaughton, who was the assistant coach, who took over as head coach later. But then as their JV coach to prepare them, they had coach Terry Lowe who was my coach in the 70s and 80s, who carried that tradition forward of well-kept football, prepared them. Like I said, anybody that played for Lowe could easily pay for Bob Farrow and Hal McNaughton, right? And then Lowe had an excellent staff of Steve Cato and Mike Swearingen, people who carried on that tradition. Steve Cato later became head coach with great uh, assistant coaches like Rusty Garcia and others. And also then Mike Swearingen became the head coach and he had great assistant coaches like John Bishop. As you know, John Bishop carried that tradition forward and took Brawley to the CIF championship game when they switched to San Diego as well. We won DVL championships with the old league in LA and then San, and since they switched to San Diego, they've been able to continue that success. And what did Bishop have? He had another fantastic uh, assistant coach who carried tradition, John Self, the current head coach. So I'm sure from these ranks will continue that brawly tradition of hard-nosed football, take no bull from anybody, and put the pole forward. Well, you know, John Self has been coaching for 30 years, 11 seasons at Brawley. He's won multiple Imperial Valley championships. Right. And then when David Rookie Pena from Brawley came back from college and went to Central, well, Central has won the bell game the last four years, and that bell game has usually decided the championship. But Brawley has continued to make it deep into the playoffs in CIF, so that athletic excellence 
and football excellence is still prevalent here in Brawley. But let's talk a little bit about you, Eric. All right. Tell us about after you left Calexico High School as a social studies or social science educator, you got into community activism yeah. with the uh, the uh, ec ec social yes, and economic justice or economic and social justice. Tell us what has transpired since then at the turn of the century in the early two thousands. <laughs> I continued my activism. I met so many fantastic people in Calexico, like John Moreno, Vic Carrillo, Nene Torres, Descanse en Paz. All those people who had said established a strong line of leadership in Calexico and understood that all of us have to take up that mantle of leadership as well. Um, I'm, I'm currently on like five different committees, the redistricting committee for the county, redistricting committee for Imperial Valley College, the lithium co committee for Imperial Valley. And the reason why, because what we decide today will impact Imperial Valley 20, 30, 40 years ago. What people didn't do before was be engaged and make their voices heard. And in particular for the underserved is what we do. We want to make sure that those it's a gente that have an opportunity for something, know what it is, and how they can access it. And uh, Calexico gave me that opportunity to see that because there are so many issues in Calexico with underserved and how we can help them, farm workers, uh, people crossing the border, uh, people that live in trailer homes. I mean, just multitude of issues. Good people that needed just a little bit of guiding light, and all of you showed me how that is important. Well, Eric, how do, you, how do you respond to the challenge of empathy and apathy, where people don't appreciate what you've done? You've created the foundation for this, and it's kind of moving on its own, but you have to constantly keep your foot on the gas pedal so that it doesn't, you know, deviate and go off yeah. on an off-ramp off and keep, you know, the younger generation that's following, keep them engaged. Yeah, what I've seen is that we have a younger more educated uh, community growing up here in the Prairie Valley that are coming back, there are more opportunity than, say, our generation, right? Mainly we went into government jobs, teaching. The corrections were a great opportunity, the corrections department. <clears throat> but now they're seeing entrepreneurship. But what I'm seeing with the younger generation, they're into global issues. Global issues are fantastic, but all politics are local. Look at your house. Look at your neighbor. Look at your down street and tell me that's where we need to work also. We can, it, we can do all kinds of global issues and take it home and make an impact with us. And I'm going to say, um, as you know, I've had my uh, naysayers, people negative towards me. That's fine. Cesar Chavez once said, talk about, tell me, show me someone who is saying something, that people are saying something bad about in your community, I'll show you someone who is doing something. Well, I, in reference to Cesar Chavez, an uh, outstanding individual who did much for the community on both sides of the border. We're a border community, the Imperial Valley tucked away in the southeastern corner of the state. And then we have the metropolis of Mexicali right. and Baja California, but over one million people in the greater and Mexicali re region. What's been said, if it's good for Calexico, it should be good for Brawley and vice versa. How have you made that come together and continue forward what we have to change a mindset and it's happening little by little economically we will not have the Imperial Valley Mall without spenders from Mexicali we will not have in Calexico the outside mall without the buying power of people of Mexicali we will not have the force that we have in Imperial Valley College without the students from Mexicali as well so we need to embrace our border identity. Not talk about the flaws, but work on the issues that will make us greater. We need to say they are as much a part of the population as anyone who has a house here, as anyone who pays rent here. But many times they are. Not only are they paying rent, they're paying sales tax, they're, they're living here, they're doing their thing here with us, and they're taking money here, spending it here, and taking those products across the border. Well, you're exactly right because the average age of a farm worker is 55 years of age. And if they don't live in the Imperial Valley, it's because housing is too high right. or, or scarce, uh, or it's for familial reasons, uh, language reasons, or maybe their family is not able to cross legally or live here legally. Right. They're border crossers. They may have documentation to cross. But getting back 
to providing that assistance with the average age being 55 years of age, that's someone's grandfather or father that's working in agricultural in, in agriculture in the fields so that their children and grandchildren won't have to. How do you address the need for labor versus the opportunity to take advantage of an education and to move up the social and economic ladder? That is a, a very key issue that as we have moved forward, we have to do a much better job of engaging, not just that worker, because they work, they work very hard, they're tired, but then the community has to engage their children, uh, the, the people who are auxiliary to that. People who are giving services need to provide a, what we don't call a uh, blanket sheet all around, uh, wrap around services, so they understand where those services are and what the resources are in a community. Our community has been very poor at accessing resources. We are resource rich in many ways, access poor in many ways. As you know, as a board, former board of supervisor, we have had to return money for job training and education in your time. And it continues to this day. Why? Because we're not engaging the proper community at all times. They are our bread and butter. Those who sacrifice the most, we need to reach out to them and make it happen for them. Now, what kind of infrastructure do you have with that engagement? Because it's a constant 24-7. One, dealing with Customs and Border Protection at the port of entry to facilitate the crossing of people so they're, they're not in line for numerous hours and arriving late to their job, arriving late to school, uh, for example. Secondly, reaching out to the educational system from kinder through the 12th grade, yeah. the community college, college system, San and San Diego State, State uh, and the University of Phoenix, for example. Also, the social conditions, not only just in El Centro, but Calexico, Hopeville to the east, Brawley, uh, Calipatria to the north, Westmoreland, Imperial, Ocotillo, and Winter Haven. So how do you handle all, how do you juggle all those responsibilities? And are you doing it alone, or do you have a network that you're grooming and mentoring so that they can carry on the torch? Yeah, it's, it's a constant battle, but most important, it's a constant reevaluation of ourselves as to how the best way to reach uh, people who need our sources. We, we rely on, you look at government, they seem to rely on tactics that were used 20, 30 years ago. That's a whole new force that is out there, a whole new group of people who have different ways of engaging publicly and knowing information. So we have to constantly reevaluate ourselves and, uh, and uh, adjust to the new methods of reaching out. And yes, we have grown uh, a coalition. We're very happy. We are part of Los Amigos de la Comunidad. We have the president, Isabel Solis, who's also the uh, IVC Board of Trustees for Area 4. And also we have Comité Civico, Jose Luis Olmedo. We have our Roots Multicultural Center with John Hernandez. We also have Imperial Valley Equity and Justice out of Calexico with Luis and Daniela Flores who had it. They have many volunteers. A lot of kids, younger kids, that's a generation that has really given us hope that they, they yes, they are globally involved, but they're, we're also working with us at the local level to understand how we can make an impact while you make your voice heard on global issues as well. So those are all the type of things we work on and, and constantly refine. Without us changing, nothing will change. The people who make, who are the advocates, have a role. At the end, though, it's the people, will they engage, will they become involved, and will they help themselves? We, we don't want to hand people things, as people say, right? We don't want to be enablers. What we want to do is show them the way and they can be the most successful for themselves. The best advocate is the person who knows what they're going through. I am not homeless, right? I am not going through a drug issue. I am not going through all these other issues people on the streets are. They need to tell us. They need to be part of our advocacy as well. And we're doing that through education, through forums, and moving forward on what the public needs the most. And we're getting it to the people who need to hear it the most. Well, Eric, you had me at hello. But if you, <laughs> if you, if you invite him to the, to the Thanksgiving dinner and he's got the, pla the platter of turkey in his hand, don't ask him a question <laughs> because <laughs> if you're really hungry. But Eric, don't sell yourself, don't sell yourself short. You talk about the naysayers. Uh, you mentioned in your opening commentary that you're involved in a lot of commissions right. and committees. You know, you've garnered 
and earned a lot of respect Thank you. For, for what you've done, who you are as a person, who you are as an advocate, and uh, as a spokesperson. Tell us, how do you balance those? I put, and it might sound, what's the word? <laughs> Self-serving. I put others before me. And the reason, again, I'm going to go back to Cesar Chavez, who showed us the light. I come from a migrant family. We used to work up in north. We used to work from Brawley, y almost a Mendota, Carmen, and Los Baños. And mi familia, we all did that. And Cesar Chavez showed us the light at that time. Only through service to others will we ever find true self-worth. And I really, truly believe in that. And you look at John Moreno, that's what he has done through his education career. You look at Victor Carrillo, that has done as an educator and as a public servant through the years. And you look at myself, in my humble way, I have tried to be a servant from one person at a time to a thousand people at a time. And that's what life is all about. If you cannot find value in that, I really don't want to talk to you. There's great value in that. And others say, well, you're doing it to get a headline. I, I don't know how many headlines I receive. I sure don't get no money for it, right? But I, <laughs> but I know we have helped so many people. You know, and, and we had a great experience as those who advocated. We were forced to come together for the virus. The only way to reach the most underserved was for all of us to come together, and we did it. And we had so many homeless people, undocumented Uh, illiterate people who were crying, not knowing how to get the virus uh, vaccination, and we helped them. Be why? Because they wanted it, and we helped them. And that's what life is all about. You have certainly been a voice for the voiceless. You've been an outstanding educator and mentor in the school system. A lot of students in the past always rain accolades when they refer to you oh. as Eric Reyes, as their teacher or their friend. And... Uh, But just in closing, you have done so many remarkable things for the community. What do you see on the horizon for Eric Reyes and maybe even the lack of civility that you see <laughs> in the political arena now? Yeah. Or is that just something that's good because it's bringing everything to the forefront and there's discourse whether you agree but, or disagree, but the fact that you can agree to disagree is the important thing. Yeah, most important is that we talk about the issues that are important to the community. And we, even if we disagree, that we work on it together, collectively. And if you don't like what I say, I can respect that. I don't have to like what you say either. Let's move forward as a community and let's be honest to ourselves as to what is good and what is bad. And that's the most important thing. And I just want to say thank you for inviting me. Que viva Calexico, los Bulldogs. I was a Calexico teacher. I'm a Brawley High graduate, Calexico teacher. Once a Bulldog, always a Bulldog, Rosa. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing our halftime show, Eric Reyes, a Brawley Hall of Famer in football <laughs> in 1982, but a Hall of Famer as a man, as a person, and as a friend. Thank you. Eric. A great baseball player like Vic, too. <laughs>
whether you're looking to purchase or sell, your next home awaits. Give the Dom team a call. With over 50 years of experience and over 100 years in the Imperial Valley, Andy and Doug can help you find the right home at the right price fast. Visit us online at www.thedomteam.com and let Andrew and Doug find the perfect home for you. Call today, 760-337-8600. From the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez, all along the border on a Friday night, it's exciting Imperial Valley League football. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Warren Field as both teams, the Brawley Wildcats and the visiting Imperial Tigers, come out from their halftime talks to get ready for the second half with a score of 14 in favor of Brawley and nine for the visiting Tigers as we get set for the Ethan Gonzalez Lopez kickoff. Back to receive for the six and four. That's goal. Damilo Camilo, Daniel Camilo. We'll pick it Remember? up at the five. Still on his feet to about the 30. And brought down by Jeremiah Naylor, the inside linebacker, also playing on the kickoff coverage team. So, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome back the voice of choice, Johnny Moe, John Moreno Brown. Hey, thank you. Eric Reyes on a great interview, Vic. He had us uh, at the edge of our seats. His, his passion for helping the community was evident, and uh, he's just an all-around great guy. Well, he didn't hesitate, John. He was right on point, and he had a, a lot to say. And as we used to joke with him, there isn't a microphone that he's never liked. <laughs> so a first and ten, the Wildcats with Ethan Gutierrez under center. He's uh, keeping the option. Evades a tackler and runs out of bounds at the 35, 36. So a pickup of six yards for the Wildcats. The Wildcats will go with Ethan Gutierrez at quarterback. 5'9", 145 pounders, but he looks a lot bigger out there as he's a big presence on the field. His running backs are Isaiah Young and Tanner Carranza, the fullback. The wideouts are Makai Washington and Daniel Camilo. The tight end, and a good one, is Robert Platt. Everybody's in tight. Ethan Gutierrez under center at the 36. This time he'll hand it off to Young. Right side. Takes it to about the 39. Young, the son of Brandon Young, the offensive coordinator, but a great brawly player and football player in the 90s, also in the Imperial Valley Football Hall of Fame and played foot college football at St. Mary's for the Gales in the Bay Area. Offensively for the Wildcats, they go with Julius Diaz and Levangelis Pittman on the left side of the line. Brian Porras is anchoring at center, and the right side is Jonathan Garcia and Anthony Arriaga. Defensively, the Tigers counter with Brian Vasquez Victor Sesenia, Wolfgang Horner, and Diego Valencia up on the front four. First and 10 for the Wildcats. Ethan Gutierrez runs the option, keeps it. You know, coming to the short side of the field, John, here in front of the 
Brawley bench. He didn't have a lot of room to maneuver, but nevertheless is able to pick up maybe half a yard on the play. Number 88, Aiden Shields, pushed him out of bounds there from his linebacking position, assisted by number 10, Victor Valenzuela. So both teams have played well defensively, John, after two quarters of play in this low-scoring ball game. 14-9, Brawley. Opening up the offense a bit. Ethan Gutierrez under center, second and nine. At about the 41. Here comes Tanner. Carranza. Carranza. Spinning and taking it up to the 45. Hit by Zach Ray along with number 22. Francisco Lopez. A 5'6", 150-pound senior. So the wing, the wing T, John, with the quarterback Gutierrez playing under center, likes to come down the line of scrimmage, keeping the ball in the running back's gut, reading what the defensive end's going to do before he decides to leave it or pull it out and keep it himself. He's got twins right. Was that the way Luis Montano played the option? That's right. That was the triple option. Gutierrez keeps it, turns it up the field, and finds a lot of room. 35-30, 25-20. Ethan Gutierrez, touchdown, Brawley. A 60-yard so, touchdown run, John. Just as you called it, a la Luis Montano, reading the option, faking the kick out, and taking it up between the hash marks. Right, the thing is he, he, he lets it ride with a, with, a, with a dive back coming up the middle. He'll pull it back, and then he'll see the first down lineman from... from uh, from center, uh, and, and if he comes forward, then he'll go around, and then he has to immediately turn it upfield. Well, he read Brian Vasquez on the outside and Ethan Rees, and then he turned it up to the inside, and there was no one there to stop him. So a 60-yard a sixty yard run for the talented quarterback, and Ethan the Gutierrez. The extra point is no good. La Resaca has the absolute best Mexican-style seafood, Chavelas, and, of course, best clamatos anywhere. Try the Sonora Fusion in El Centro for the best cuts of beef. La Resaca at 221 Campillo Street in Calexico and in El Centro at 6th and State. And listen to the Que Pasa Calexico podcast for can candid conversations with many of Imperial Valley personalities. Jose Alejos has been hosting the podcast for over five years. Last podcast, he had Jesus Cachu Escobar. That's the Que Pasa Calexico podcast. Learn, grow, and make Imperial Valley a better place. And by Fred Miramontes, under sheriff, reminds you that you can start a neighborhood watch program in your rural area. Call them at 265-2000 for more information. 442-265-2000. Support your neighborhood watch volunteers. Well, John, we get set with a George Harrow kick. Another pooch. To Devin Mesa. And he'll kneel it at the 33. Kind of exactly what he did last time. So, so that's part of the philosophy of John Self is to work on these onside and pooch kicks and also with special teams two days out of the week in practice where they, it's not just a cursory uh, going over the drills. They really work at creating a turnover, either tackling the receiver and trying to jar the ball loose and then they have a second defender coming up, working on the scoop and scooping up the ball and advancing it forward. First and 10, Tigers with Reese Vindiola, Tiernan in the backfield. Vindiola to the shotgun, hands it off to CJ Tiernan, left side. He'll pick up about four. Take it inside the 40 to about the 30. 37. Well, John, we're getting a lot of messages on that outstanding interview provided by Eric Reyes. The articulation, the knowledge of all the issues that, have, uh, that affect the southeast region, particularly the Imperial Valley. From, and we didn't even talk about the Salton Sea or, or air quality, which I'm sure Eric would have had something to say. But very insightful and uh, a great guy. Tiernan, coming this way. Hit hard this time. 
Stop by number 12 for the... That's Aiden Torres, the strong safety for or free safety for the Wildcats. A six-footer, 160 pounds. But not so, John, tell me a little bit about Eric Reyes playing in 1982, Hall of Famer, and then he's taken that, that attitude and that leadership into the community as a community advocate and activist. Well, I worked well, a lot with him when he was at Calexico High School. We did some coaching uh, under El Gutierrez back in the early 90s when, when Eric was a coach in Calexico. Bindiola shoots it to the near flat, incomplete. That was to, intended for Nichols. But Dan he was well guarded. By Daniel Camilo, their, their great cornerback, and uh, who has four interceptions on the season to his credit. And you can see it's evidence there on his stellar coverage and reading the defense. You know, John, I had the, uh, the fortunate opportunity to interview uh, Daniel Camilo on August 13th at Southwest at the football carnival. And his knowledge, his study of film, I thought I was talking to a pro. End over end. And it'll be down inside the 30 at about the 26, 27. And that was number 20, Tiger Ochoa, 5'6", 150 pounds, appropriately named after the mascot of the Imperial Tigers. Well, there was a mascot. There was not a mascot, but a greeter way back in the day for Brawley they called Tiger. Right. And he would come out running uh, with, with a football team. The Golden Horde, they were known. Brawley's uniforms were school bus, school bus yellow. They wore them home and away, if I remember correctly. And we used to play our Imperial Valley League opponents twice, home and away type of series. So there was always a lot of anticipation for the second game. Uh, to determine the outcome of the league champion. And it was only the league champion that went to CIF then in the southern section. Brawley with the first and 10, spreading out the offense. A quick dump pass to number 23. That is Young. Will not be able to get much as he tried to turn it up the field. So the Golden Horde from back in the day. That's when Coach Farrell in the 50s and 60s Bob Farrell was a coach, and then he was succeeded by Hal McNaughton. And Eric gave us a, a, a visual history of, of, of Brawley's coachings and teams throughout the, throughout the years in his interview. Second and nine. Trips left. Gutierrez out of the shotgun. A quick pass. He looked like he ran into his running back coming out of the backfield, and kind of threw his momentum off. Well, John, speaking of the past, a football great and basketball great for Brawley from the class of 68, the late Willie Baskis recently passed away. We send our condolences to the Baskis family and all their extended family and friends here that still live in the Brawley area, and particularly his real close friend, James Jimmy Skipper, Skip, along with Alex Musino and Henry Romero, all good friends of his, of Willie. They all went to go see him up in the Seattle area in his final days. And uh, I had a chance to talk to Willie on the Father's Day weekend. And uh, he was alert and uh, talking about old times and uh, a friendship that went back to when we were in fifth grade playing basketball against each other. Well, it was a low snap to Gutierrez and he he probably touched, his knee touched the ground. So they'll get it back, way back there. You know, but you, but the, the Willie Baskis was the first kicker. He was all legs. He was about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and it seemed like uh, three-fourths of his body were legs. When he would kick off, he would kick the ball through the uprights. You know, I'd never, I'd never seen anybody kick the ball that far, and particularly at the high school level. And he it, went it, on to college. And, yes, and he went to the University of Montana on a basketball scholarship. So the Tanner Carranza punt takes a Tiger bounce, and it'll be fielded right at the 49 where the Tigers will take over. And he was an educator and a coach and did a lot of great things. He did, along with his cousin, Ronnie Baskis, who was a star running back in 1962-63, graduating in 64, played with Ralph Messino and the Al Perez 
and the Pettis brothers that were a continuation of great quarterbacks that played for Brawley. So Brawley has a strong history and tradition, just like the Golden Bulldogs did in the in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And uh, it, we've always had a great rapport and relationship with the community of Brawley. Here comes Tiernan. Crossing midfield and into the 45. A pickup of six from the handoff from Vindiola. So the Tigers go with the freshman quarterback, Reese Vindiola, a 6'1", 160-pound freshman. He's joined in the backfield with Seth Shaw, who haven't seen carry the ball, along with Christopher C.J. Turnan and the occasional Jeremiah Naylor. Right now in shotgun formation, we have Vindiola. Standing alongside him is uh, Tiernan. So we're spreading out the office with one lone setback. Tiernan will get the handoff. And he's going left side off tackle up to and inside the 40 for a first and 10. Move those chains for the Tigers. A gang of tacklers of Brawley making that tackle paced by Aiden Torres, number 12, the, fr the free safety. 5.15 and counting in the third quarter. 20 to 9, the Wildcats. The Tigers have the football with Tiernan now in the shotgun. Shaw in the backfield. He'll give it to Shaw. Shaw finds nothing on the left side. Tackled immediately by Alan Carrillo. Came into the game with 27 tackles on the season to his credit. 14 of those solo. And uh, right away, making that tackle on, sh on is that Shaw or is that number 21 that on the ground? That is Shaw. He's, he's, trying, he's getting up slowly, but looks like he's got a leg injury. Well, he was tackled right around the ankles, and uh, the 270-pound Carrillo falling on him may have caused a little twist there. But nevertheless, he's helped off the field by the coaching staff of Imperial, so with 4.47 remaining here in the third quarter, Imperial leads by a score of, Brawley leads by a score of 20 to nine. Imperial faced with a second and 10. And it's a long 10 at the 39 yard line of Brawley. Tiernan out of the shotgun. Naylor in the backfield. Tiernan keeps it. Will take it to about the 46. You know, Turnin's a good passer, John. He comes into the game with 22 completions on 47 attempts for 372 yards and four touchdown passes. I'm, I'm surprised that Imperial isn't throwing more frequently. Third and six, Tiernan evading tacklers. On the left side will be knocked out of bounds. And that was number 17. Robert Plant that made that big hit to move him backwards and then Camilo Daniel that is coming in to finish him off so it'll be fourth and a long three well cats are all coming in showing blitz waiting for a long count turning out of the shotgun Hands it off to Naylor. Does he get the first down? He does move the chains. Naylor, their short yard specialist, John, averaging 4.4 yards per carry in between the tackles and in the trenches and when they're most needed. And Taylor, Naylor responds again in a positive manner as he gets a much needed first down with 3.14 remaining here in the third quarter. The Tigers down by a score of 20 to 9. They need to score on this drive, John. We got an update from the Calexico Southwest game. It's still 13-7 at the end of the third quarter with Calexico on top. First and 10. Vindiola hands it off and bobbling the ball as he goes up the middle. CJ Turner is Tiernan. But he'll get a good amount of yardage. They'll move it up six. It's almost like tears for fears or 96 tears. And by question mark and the Mysterians, it's Tiernan. Yes, I've been saying it. I know. And his grandfather I've, corrected me. I've been mispronouncing it. His grandfather, Robert Mesa, corrected me. He pulled me on the side at the Imperial game. Hey, John, come here. It's Tiernan. So I got it. 
second and about four. Naylor back there. And Tiernan going into the slot. But it looks like a timeout is called. So with 2.13 remaining in the third quarter, Brawley 20, Imperial 9. Havens and Sons Trucking is located at 603 East Main in El Centro. Specializing in gravel, rock, and stone for all your landscaping materials and needs. Call us for your next project. That's 760-352-6735. Havens Landscaping, proud sponsor of VSN. Johnny's Burritos, a family-run business since 1963. An Imperial Valley tradition. Eat what you love at Johnny's Burritos located in Brawley, El Centro, and Imperial. Open Monday through Saturday. Johnny's Burritos. Dippy Duck, IID's official safety mascot, has been teaching children water safety for more than 50 years. Recognizing the need to further educate the youth in the valley, he recently took on the challenge of promoting energy safety as well. Keep that thermostat at 78. The perfect time for you to refinance, maybe now. Don't miss your chance to save cash or shorten your loan term. Call George Nava at Nava Commercial Capital and Real Estate. 760-960-3049, Nava Commercial Capital and Real Estate. Second and short, Vindiola out of the shotgun. Play action, rolling out. Looking deep, a man is there, caught! Touchdown, Imperial Jesse Nichols in the end zone from Reese Vindiola and putting the Tigers back up there. That was Reese Vindiola, the freshman's quarterback, uh, his first touchdown of the season, and it couldn't have come at a more timely uh, moment as Jess Nichols gets behind the defender after the play broke down as Vindiola was flushed out of the pocket and forced to scramble to his right, but he made a beautiful pass to the leaping Nichols, and the Tigers have now cut into this lead down by five as they get set for what looks like it'll be a two-point conversion attempt. And you have... You have Zach Ray in the backfield as the H-back and, and Tiernan. Tiernan out of the shotgun. Power left. And he's going in that direction. And I don't think he got it. He did not. And so with 2.03 to go third quarter, it's 2015. Brawley Wildcats. Well, the... Tigers are going to need a touchdown to get back into the game anyway to take the lead. At Sanders Incorporated, architecture and engineering is our expertise. A leader in design, development, and delivery, Sanders Incorporated is a proud supporter of Imperial Valley football, and we wish all of our Imperial Valley schools a safe and successful season. At Arctic Air, we know that having the right people on the job is just as important as choosing the best equipment. Our York-trained professionals provide you with top-quality equipment, skilled installation, and an expert analysis of your comfort needs. Contact Arctic Air Conditioning and Heating at 352-8855. Proud sponsor of Imperial Valley Football. And by Reach Air Medical Service, medical air transport. Patient care is our number one priority. Fast, safe, reliable. Reach Air Medical Service, modern day heroes. Thank you, Donnie Wharton, for providing the best service around. The Tigers are getting set to kick off Ethan Gonzalez Lopez. And back to receive Camilo. It'll be a pooch. And fair mm -hmm. caught there by number 12. Aiden Torres. And so the Wildcats will take over at the 30 at their own 32 with two minutes to go in this third quarter. Testing. So, the Wildcats come out. They're splitting three receivers to the far side. Ethan Gutierrez. Well, John, with Shotgun. two or three remaining here in the third quarter, it looks like this game will be decided whoever has the ball last in the fourth quarter. Gutierrez, shotgun, takes the snap, finds Young, in the backfield, picks up two. So Gutierrez, an outstanding runner himself, also an excellent passer, 
joined in the backfield by with Isaiah Young and Carranza. The wideouts are Washington and Camilo, Daniel that is, and the tight end is Robert Platt. Trips right. Gutierrez now under center on a second and nine. He keeps the football, pitches it to the far side, number six, the 45. That's Camilo. All the way down to touchdown, Broly. But there's a flag, wait a minute, there's a flag over here in front of the Imperial bench. I, I, if it's a lot, it's a 67 yard touchdown run, John, by Daniel Camilo, an outstanding junior. It looks like it's coming back. So that's two TDs that were called back for the Wildcats in this game. Holding against the Wildcats. So yes, it definitely will come back. Uh, nullifying an excellent run by Dan Camilo. While Gutierrez was reading the defensive end and the outside linebacker, and once they committed, he pitched to the trailing Daniel Camilo, who got to the outside and then put on the afterburners and just outran the Imperial secondary. But it was all for naught as someone was called for holding. We don't know who. And instead of having a 67 yard touchdown scamper to his credit, they'll have they'll be faced with a second and 16. With a minute 14 to go third quarter, we have an update Calexico and Southwest in the fourth quarter. 11 minutes, 19 to 7, Calexico. Ethan Gutierrez under center. Hands it off. An almost finding a lot Corrales. of room there is Gilbert Corrales turning the corner and picking up almost 10, 12 yards. Well, the defense led by Ethan Reeves. Kai Bishop, Aiden Shields wearing jersey number 88, and Jeremiah Naylor, that secondary, those linebackers, and they're having to make a lot of tackles along with number 10, Moreno, or excuse me, Victor Valenzuela. So a third. Is that a third down? Okay, there is third down and about three. Gutierrez under center. Corrales again, a quick pitch sweep to the far side. He'll get the first down. They'll move the change for the Brawley Wildcats. And that was number 36, Joel Villa Campos making that stop. Sorry, that was Camilo, Vic. Yeah, Daniel Camilo, I said. Right. No, I said, I said the wrong name. There's two, two of them. Chris Camilo, a sophomore, the leading tackler and, on the team. And Daniel. And Daniel, a junior. Middle linebacker, cornerback. You know, there'll be a lot of great returning, both ways. returning players for both the Imperial Tigers and the Wildcats, as well as the other teams throughout the league. And the end of the third quarter, folks, 20 to 15 in favor of the Brawley Wildcats. Ojeda Industries, commercial and industrial equipment supplier. Ojeda Industries is proud to sponsor the Valley Sports Network. Ojeda Industries was voted Imperial Valley Press Reader's Choice for the Best Farming Equipment Provider in 2019. Located in Brawley, Ojeda Industries. And your county supervisor, District 1, Jesus Cachu Escobar, is a proud sponsor of VSN. And as a committed public servant, Jesus Escobar's civic and community involvement includes being a board member of the Border Communities Capital Company. He'd like to thank all his constituents of District 1, and he wishes all Valley teams a great season. The Dom Team Real Estate Company serves the entire Imperial Valley with a full array of services limited not only to residential but including farmland, commercial, and industrial ground. For honest and reliable real estate advice, it's the Dom Team at 760-337-8600. You need a job? You need to hire someone who needs a job? Give Keystone HR a call at 357-2929 for your staffing needs. That's Keystone HR in Calexico, a proud sponsor of Imperial Valley Football. And subscribe to our VSN YouTube channel and follow VSN on Instagram. 
As we switch sides now, it's first and 10 for the Wildcats, double doubles. Ethan Gutierrez out of the shotgun. Ball at the 48 yard line of Brawley. Gutierrez dropping back, looking quickly, shoots it, passes, caught! And it'll be a first down by, that's that number six. That's Daniel Camilo, the outstanding football player for the Brawley Wildcats as both Robert Platt were, and Camilo were open out in the flat and Gutierrez wisely selecting the wide open Camilo. So the ball is across midfield at the Tiger 46 yard line on the far hash mark. First and 10, we're starting the fourth quarter, 2015. Number 52, the anchor of the offensive line, Brian Porras at center. Double-double formation for the Wildcats. Gutierrez out of the shotgun. Dropping back, stepping up, looking, shoots it. And there's Camilo, but not quite where he wanted it. Well, he th overshot him by about five yards, and Camilo would have had to gone out of bounds to catch the ball inside the 10-yard line to make that reception. But it shows you the caliber and strength of Gutierrez, the quarterback's arm, and his throwing ability. You know, during the pregame warm-ups, John, he was making all the, every type of throw that they expect quarterbacks to make, particularly the 20-yard out pattern. So he does have good arm strength. Second and 10 for the Wildcats with trips to the near side and Gutierrez under center. Running the option, keeps it. A, a gain of about three. And he's brought down immediately by number 29, Zach Ray, outside linebacker for the Tigers. And I just got a correction from uh, Chief Chalo Gerardo. He's correcting me on how we pronounce the Imperial quarterback's name. Thank you, Charlie. So what's the correct pronunciation? Tiernan. Tiernan, that's what we've been saying, yes. 96 tiers. A, a handoff <laughs> on the man in motion, Daniel Camilo couldn't turn it up the field. So it'll bring up a fourth down for Brawley. So who are you gonna believe, John, the grandfather or the chief of police? Well, I, both of them are very credible. Okay. So if you're cruising in Calexico, go with Eduardo. <laughs> Fourth and long with Tanner Carranza punting and back to receive Seth Shaw. So apparently it seems like Shaw has recovered from his uh, ankle injury. And a beautiful punt by Carranza to go in the end zone and the Tigers will take it at the 20. Well, that punt traveled 55 yards in the air, and as a result, the, wild, the Tigers will take it out on their own 20. 9.56 remaining here in the fourth quarter. The score, 20 to 15, a narrow margin enjoyed by the Brawley Wildcats. The Wildcats opened up the league season last week with a resounding victory over the Southwest Eagles. What was that, John, 55 to six? I think so. And, F yeah. F uh, and the Imperial Tigers played a non their last non-league game, the Imperial Valley Classic at Hopeville last Thursday, and eked out a 14 to eight victory decided in the closing seconds of that ball game. Reese Vindiola in the backfield. N Naylor. Naylor comes up for a gain of five, six. Gilbert Corrales along with Aiden Torres and Isaiah Young making the stop there. Also assisting on the play, outside linebacker Robert Platt. Second and about three for the Tigers. Vindiola. Naylor couldn't find anything there. He stopped. In fact, maybe brought down for a loss. Tackled immediately by number 72, Alan Carrillo. Who's now the leading tackler. The grandson of Gilbert Carrillo, along with 
There's De La Rosa blood in that young man as well. An outstanding couple. And he's a wrestler too. He's a state champion wrestler. Oh, you mentioned that earlier. So he's, he's, he's up with the heavyweights. We'll have to get an update from Chris De La Rosa. Third and about four. Full house backfield for the Tigers. A quick pitch. Tiernan looking deep and in looking for Jesse Nichols, who was double teamed. And well, what created that, allowed that double team, John, was that the pass was underthrown by about 10 yards. And Nichols had to come back, but he had a 10 yard cushion between him and the closest defender. And if that pass, if Tiernan would have had time to plant his foot, his back foot, and throw the ball, he would have reached it. But nevertheless, it falls incomplete. A disappointment on this drive for the Tigers. And back to punt is... Uh, Ethan Gonzalez Lopez. And Daniel Camilo, the deep back. Corrales, the up back, standing at his own 50. End over end low will go out of bounds at about the 48 of Brawley. Imperial Printers, we're ready to help you with your next project from business cards to yard signs and everything in between. Give us a call at 352-1300 for a quote or any question you might have. Imperial Printers, what can we print for you today? And by the Town Pump Steakhouse, open now Tuesday through Saturday. Give us a call at 344-3663 for reservations located at 200 West Main in Westmoreland. Special steak and lobster dinner at the Town Pump, a valley tradition for over 50 years. First and 10, Ethan Gutierrez. Shotgun, trips left. A little flare pass to Camilo. And he can't find anything there. Zach Ray in on that play, despite the fine blocking of Robert Platt, Camilo not able to get free as the ever-present effort of Zach Ray from his outside linebacking position there to break up that play. So it'll be second and 11 as there was a one-yard loss on the play. Tonight's game being officiated by J.J. Jackson, Sean McLaughlin, Gabe Castro, Mike Walla, and Randy Ross doing an outstanding job tonight. A busted play there, well, John. Well, Gutierrez did, uh, <laughs> didn't let it go, and he thought Young was going to take it, and so there was a kind of a, a tug-of-war on that football, Vic. Right. It was like when Georgie and I used to play in the backyard, and whose, whose ball was it? Anyway, a rare busted play by the Wildcats, and so... A, a penalty flag thrown on the play near the end of that play. The Wildcats think it's against them as they're walking back the yardage. Holding. So, John, when you're faced with a second and long, this being a second and about 18, there aren't too many plays that a coach has in his, in his, uh, on the drawing board That'll get you 18 yards on one play. Second and about 23 with 7.42 to go in this football game. 2015 Brawley. Gutierrez has three receivers to the far side. And if he did, he'd still come up five yards shy of a first down. Out of the shotgun, he'll take the snap. Quickly throwing it on a crossing route to number five. It's caught. That is Mikay Washington. Makai Washington. Wait a minute, it's, incom it's incomplete, Vic. Did, uh, did the ground cause the ball to come loose? Probably, and so they'll put it back to the line of scrimmage. It so looked... it'll, it'll be a third and 23. So an underneath crossing route by Washington coming across the line of scrimmage and not able to hang on to the ball, but he, would have been, he was tackled immediately. Trips left. Gutierrez, shotgun. Receiver switching. Third and 23. Gutierrez. Flushed out of the pocket. Saves a sack. Looking deep. And throwing up for anybody. And incomplete. That was Robert Platt, the sophomore, 
the intended receiver, the ball under thrown as Platt originally was a couple of steps beyond Seth Shaw, who was covering on the play, but the elusive, the elusive Gutierrez John ducking under that rush and spinning and getting out of that and going to his left, trying to make that throw. Very athletic, very skilled, and only a junior. So Tanner Carranza will, will punt with Seth, Seth Shaw standing at the 32. That's like a tongue twister, huh, John? <laughs> Say it fast enough. Low snap, but Carranza will get it off. End over end low. It'll go out of bounds inside the 35. So with 7-12 remaining here in the fourth quarter, the Tigers find themselves down by five points, 20 to 15, are going to try to launch a drive from their own 35-yard line to hit pay dirt and see if they can regain the lead here. They enjoyed it scoring first with a 6-0 six, six on a Naylor run, but the point after attempt was low and wide right by Ethan Gonzalez, and as a result, the Tigers have played behind since then as the Tiger, as the Wildcats have scored on three consecutive possessions. 7-12 to go in this football game. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own 34-yard line with C.J. Tiernan. No, that is Vindiola. Vindiola rolling out. Quick pass. Caught Jesse Nichols at the 40. Up to about the 44. Does he get the first down? It might be just shy second and inches. No, he got it. Looks like he got that. Oh, so, no. No, wait a minute. Yes, yeah. they're moving those chains, John. So first how's, and how's, ten, that familiar just, call, how's that familiar call of yours? Move those chains. Is Josh Lewin from the San Diego Chargers. Radio announcer. So, Vindiola to Tiernan. Couldn't find anything there. Wait a minute. They took the ball away. And Plot was a, with a recovery. They work on this two days a week in practice, as I alluded to earlier. And Plot comes up with another, another fumble recovery to aid the Brawley defensive cause. And will have the ball at the Imperial 25-yard line. And we have an injured player down That's on the field. Alan Carrillo might have cramps. You know, you referred to the athletic prowess of Carrillo as a wrestler going to the state. You know, the Brawley program, if they're not going to play basketball or soccer in the winter, they have these uh, young men go out for wrestling. Not so much to compete in matches, but to learn wrestling techniques, how to use their body positioning, how to use their lower core muscles, and how to use their hands in combat. So when they're playing in the line of scrimmage uh, on offense or defense, you know, this bodes well for them. Oh yeah, and it's- And it's that was evidence there on that fumble causing tackle and the fumble recovery. First and 10, give it to Young. Young finds a lot of room. He'll take it to about the 20, but there may have been a fumble. The Tigers have to get a takeaway, cause a turnover here the to get the ball back. A 20, at the 20-yard line, second and about five. They can't let Brawley put this, this game out of reach. Gutierrez with trips right. Again, another handoff to Young. The tackle made by Zach Ray. A gain of one. Number 29, assisted by number 55, Kai Bishop. Bishop, an outstanding game on the defensive end from his linebacking position along with Zach Ray. Well, we got an update for the Calexico Bulldogs, 25 to seven. Abraham Sasueta just scored a touchdown. And in I the fourth the, quarter with four minutes to go. The volume of your voice going a little uh, well, higher octave. Well, you know, what are you, you going to do, Vic? <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't <laughs> scream, touchdown, Calexico. A, a handoff from Gut Gutierrez to Young. Brawley keeping the ball on the ground, trying to chew up quality clock time as the clock ticking, 525, 524. It'll be a fourth down and a long four 
or three for the Wildcats for a first down. The ball at the 17-yard line of Kalexi. Uh, excuse me. There I go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the 17 of the Tigers. So Gutierrez will go for it on a fourth down. Well, John, after 27 seasons of Bulldog Radio, <laughs> we're allowed to make a miss, aren't we? Young gets the handoff, gets a first down, and more. He'll take it inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Move those chains for the Brawley Wildcats. Once again, making a touchdown saving tackle, Zach Ray, number 29, but not until Young was able to pick up a first down to keep this drive alive. Young with 10 rushing touchdowns to his credit, almost added another as he was tackled at the nine yard line of Imperial. So it's first and goal from the nine. Three receivers on the left side. Gutierrez giving it to Young. Young off tackle. We'll take it inside the five to the three. Running behind the blocking of Julius Diaz and Levangelis Pittman, 260 pounder. Brawley running to the strength of their offensive line as they send three to the near side, split out. Second and goal from very close to the goal line. Look for Young to run behind the blocking of there number There he goes, Young, touchdown, Brawley. So running behind the blocking of right tackle, number 74, Anthony Arriaga, opening up a running lane. Young able to take it in to the house with 3.59 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Brawley extends her lead to 11, 26 to 15 as we get set for the George Hotto point after attempt with Nathan Gutierrez holding. Correction, that's Ethan Gutierrez. And just like that, he splits the uprights, giving Brawley 27 to 15 here in the fourth quarter, 359. Want to stay up to date with the latest Imperial Valley Sports coverage? Follow us on Twitter at Valley Sports Net and make sure you have post notifications turned on. Need real estate services? Thinking of buying or selling a house? Wondering what your property is worth? Get top dollar on your investment. Call Marcus Gedd, real estate broker, offering professional, friendly, and service for over 27 years. That's Esquerre Realty, the mark of excellent 357-9707. And by Letterman and Bro. Have you earned your varsity letter? We'll get your Letterman jacket started today at lettermanandbros.com. Ask for Dan at 693-5034. And the well, Robinson Ford family is proud to support breast cancer awareness. We pray for the many people in our Imperial Valley who have suffered from the grave illness. Stomp out breast cancer in the month of October. Robinson Ford sales reminds you due to the chip shortage, new car inventory is increasing slower than usual. Otto with a pooch. Picked up and dropped, but picked up again by number 22. That is Francisco Lopez, and he'll be brought down inside the 35. So Otto, who has the capability of kicking the ball into the end zone, he has a 60-yard kickoff to his credit and a couple of touchbacks, but the Wildcats, under the direction and tutelage of John Self, in his 30th season coaching, his 11th in Brawley, has multiple Imperial Valley championships under his belt as he also assisted the great John Bishop during his coaching tenure as the Wildcats look to hold the Tiger offense at bay. Vindula to Suarez. So Dominic Suarez catches the football and will pick up eight. An extra push by John Robert Platt there as Suarez going out of bounds, going over the bench, rolling under the legs of the cheerleaders here who weren't aware that that was happening as they thought they were safely on the track here at Warren Field. But Suarez shakes it off and goes back out to take his position as he comes split again to the near sideline. 3.48 to go. So, John, I guess if you're a football purist, you would have called that good old-fashioned hard-knocking football. 
Wait a minute there. It looks like uh, Coach Shaw is talking to J.J. Jackson. Well, the referees didn't swallow their whistle on that play. It was just a continuation in their momentum. Second and three for the Tigers. As Chick Hearn used to say, John, the great Laker announcer, no harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. Trips right. Vindiola flushed out of the pocket and sacked inside the 25 at the 23. And that was outside linebacker Tanner Carranza there to make that stop for a big loss for the Tigers. So from a second and three, they're now faced with a third and forever. The ball back at the Tiger 27-yard line. 320. They need, they need to get to their 45 for a first down. So they have two downs to do it, John, with 312 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Brawley 27, Imperial 15. Doubles. And Vindiola looking for Suarez. Under throws, incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth down, Vic. Well, a fourth down play coming up with 302 remaining. Imperial needs two scores to tie the game, let alone take the lead. So they're, they're going to punt. And we got Camilo, Dan Camilo in the back. And Ethan Gonzalez Lopez punting for the Imperial Tigers. And you have Gilbert Corrales, the up back, standing at the Tiger 45. Gonzalez Lopez spiraled. Fair catch. And so Camilo will, Dan Camilo fair, fair caught it at the 43, 42. So the Tiger, the Tiger offense not able to convert on their offensive series and they kick the ball back to Brawley. Brawley will take over with quarterback Ethan Gutierrez receiving instruction from head coach John Self and Brandon Young the offensive coordinator. A little under three minutes to go in this football game, Vic. It is 27-15. So Wildcats. the ball at the 42-yard line of the Wildcats. They're going left to right. They'll get into their ball control offense with Isaiah Young in the backfield. Trips right, running the option. Gutierrez looking for a receiver, number four. That is Brandon, Brandon Porras, Porras, only a freshman. Unable to make the, the catch, and as a result, the clock stops with that incomplete pass at 2.53. So it'll be second and 10. Second and 10 from the 40, for the 42 yard line. Well, John, this is where the Tiger defense has to become opportunistic here and try to create a turnover here as Brawley comes out with trips to the near side. Gutierrez out of the shotgun, second and 10. At the 42, Young in the backfield. Running the option, decides to keep. Gutierrez turns it up, finds room, gets a first down and more. Will take it into Tiger territory at about the 47. He'll pick up 12. Well, Gutierrez came into the game with 44 rushing attempts for 400 yards. He averages 9.5 yards per carry and Five touchdowns have resulted in that. He had an electrifying 73-yard touchdown run earlier in the game, so he, he can do it both with his feet and his arms. Gutierrez on a first and 10, out of the shotgun. Trips right, calls the signals, takes a snap, hands it off to Young. Young can't find anything there. And it'll bring up a second and 10. So, John, there have been some outstanding players in this game thus far. For Brawley, it's been Gutierrez, Camilo, Corrales, along with uh, Isaiah Young. But we have to select a player of the game for the VSN Burgers and Beer. And we'll get to that at the conclusion of this one with a minute 45 to go. Gutierrez now under center. And the Imperial Tigers have had some standouts as well. Naylor, Bishop, Ray. 
The handoff to Tiernan. The handoff to Young will take it to the 40. It'll bring up third. And a timeout is called for the most in-depth local and regional news and the best high school sports coverage around. Check out the Calexico Chronicle and the Hoteville Tribune in print or online at the all-new ColexicoChronicle.com. Chronicling our community, border region, and beyond since 1904. And check out Top Notch Barbershop at 317 Wake Avenue in El Centro. Open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 8 to 9, Sundays 8 to 5, where our regular haircuts are always 20 bucks, and Wednesdays is our $15 special. Military and senior discounts offered every day. And by Marianne Valenzuela Fenley, your State Farm Insurance agent in the Imperial Valley, specializing in auto, home, business, property, life, and more. And with over 20 years experience, Marianne will help figure out what coverage you need to take control of your financial future. Like a good neighbor, she's located at 122 Main Street in Brawley. And by Ivy Welding and Mechanical. Fred Baeza of Ivy Welding and Mechanical is proud to sponsor Valley Sports Network. 760-482-WELD. That's Ivy Welding and Mechanical. Third and about five. Gutierrez under center. Keeps it on the option, finds a lot of room at the 30 and st stumbles down inside the 30, but gets a first down, Vic, and that's all he'll need because there's 126 to go in this football game. Well, he gets up in frustration, and his, his feet came out from under him, John, as he was cutting to his left and then darted to his right and stumbled, but he had a touchdown right there if he would have just run straight a, towards the end zone. Nevertheless, a break for Imperial but where he didn't score, and with a minute remaining here in the ball game, Brawley will probably just go into victory formation. And we have a final with the Calexico Southwest game. 25-15, Calexico. Kind of similar score here. So Calexico on the win column, Southwest were their second loss in league play, falling to 0-2. Calexico evening their record to 1-1. And for the best burgers in town, it's Burgers and Beer at 260 North Imperial Avenue in El Centro. Open seven days a week and serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Burgers and Beer is the place to watch the big game. Great food and great service. That's Burgers and Beer. So next week, uh, Imperial Valley League will have Calexico at Brawley. South West will travel to Palo Verde in non-league, and Imperial will be at Central. In the Desert League, Calipatria at Mountain Empire, and Vincent will be at Hauteville. So we're certain to be calling one of those games. Right. And Will Torres and Ron Rubio with Valley Sports Network North will be handling the other. And my guess is VSN North might have the Calexico at Brawley game. First and 10. Nevertheless, John, it's exciting Imperial Valley football all, brought to you on live stream on valleysportsnetwork.net. All, all, all the way around, Vic. It's exciting. And just like that, Ethan Gutierrez will take a knee in the victory formation. And an uh, outstanding play by all. Tonight here in this Imperial Valley Classic matchup with Brawley and Imperial. So that will be it. The final score will be 27-15. Well, John, this was a well-officiated game by J.J. Jackson wearing the white hat tonight, assisted by Sean McLaughlin and Gabe Castro, along with Mike Walla and Randy Ross. Oh, a well-officiated game. The game was clean and hard-hitting, and both teams had an equal opportunity to be successful and win tonight, but Brawley prevailed. They scored two more touchdowns than the Tigers did, and as a result, they take home a 27-15 victory over the visiting Tigers here at Warren Field. And we'll be right back with our final comment.
Reducing energy use during the summer is more important than ever. This summer, IID encourages you to do your part by setting your thermostat to 78 degrees or higher, avoiding the use of large appliances between 4 and 9 p.m., and turning off all unnecessary lighting. But there's more. IID provides a number of summer energy-saving opportunities to help you make the most of your energy savings efforts. Check out our tips and energy saving guides at IID.com. Let's work together to stay cool and save energy this summer. Whether you're looking to purchase or sell, your next home awaits. Give the Dom team a call. With over 50 years of experience and over 100 years in the Imperial Valley, Andy and Doug can help you find the right home at the right price fast. Visit us online at www.thedomteam.com and let Andrew and Doug find the perfect home for you. Call today, 760-337-8600. So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Warren Field here as the Brawley Wildcats hosting the Imperial Tigers pull out a 27 to 15 victory over the visiting Tigers that are coached by David Shaw. An outstanding football game tonight, John. Excellent field generalship on both sides of the ball, but in particular with Brawley and Ethan Gutierrez. Timely running by Isaiah Young along with Gutierrez and some key pass receptions by Robert Platt along with Daniel Camilo from the wide receiver position. And there were a lot of good plays, a lot of players that contributed to this team victory. But the player that stood out the most, not only with his leadership and field generalship, but also his running ability and passing ability. And just, he was the dominant player on the field. And that was Ethan Gutierrez, who is my nomination for player of the game. And I agree with you, Vic. I, I saw Ethan Gutierrez as an outstanding veer option quarterback who reads the defense and does everything needed to, to, to do in order to make sure that this thing of beauty, this option football is run correctly. And he did an outstanding job tonight uh, with his, uh, Isaiah Young uh, on, on you know, the tug of war with the football and running the option, but he did an outstanding job. And I want to thank uh, him for just playing exciting football. Well, it was an excellent game plan devi uh, devised by John Self along with Brandon Young, his offensive coordinator, and the players executed. The offensive line provided great running lanes. Anthony Arriaga, Alan Carrillo, uh, Lavantris, Pittman, and uh, the list goes on and on. But it was collectively also on defense, they made some key hits. They stopped Imperial when they had to. Their special teams created turnovers and they capitalized on them and scored right after that. So it was a well-played game, well-coached. And on the Imperial side, David Shaw, his players were prepared. They took an early lead. They couldn't sustain it. And uh, they were playing catch up the rest of the game, but kudos to them offensively and defensively. Uh, 
Hopefully they'll take and learn from this one and as they go next week to play the Central Spartans, I believe. Well, you have two well-coached and top-rated teams in the Imperial Valley coming together here at Warnfield and Brawley, and it could have gone either way, but in this case, Brawley just had that little extra oomph, that, that, that uh, smash-mouth football, if you will, and came out ahead, 27-15. An excellent game, and as they say, the road to the IVL Championship goes through Brawley, but I'm certain the Central Spartans will have a firm statement to make to determine that. Remember, they've been the four-time defending champion of the Imperial Valley League, and until you rest it away from them, they can still make that claim. And it could be decided the final game of the regular season when Brawley and Central meet for the traditional bell game. And that's usually how it happens in the last so many years that uh, the Central Spartans and the Brawley Wildcats finish off the IVL for the championship in the bell game. Next week, uh, we have Calexico at Brawley, Southwest at Palo Verde, and Imperial at Central in the Imperial Valley League. And then in the Desert League, Calipatri is at Mountain Empire, and Vincent is at Hauteville. So exciting football coming up in the middle of October, uh, especially the, uh, what we call it the Ides of October, October 15th, for more uh, football action here in the Imperial Valley. Any final comments, Vic? No, an outstanding game played by both squads and representative of both their schools. We'd like to thank our halftime guest, Eric Reyes, for enlightening our list, our viewing audience for all of the things that he's been doing in the community and the southeastern portion of the state and uh, really helping the voice, speaking, providing the voice for the voiceless. And uh, thank you to Chaka Alcantar with his great hospitality up here in the press box. Thank you, Jose Alejos, our engineer in the booth and our cameraman Luis Panchito Garcia. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's final score Brawley 27 Imperial 15 For Vic Carrillo, this is John Moreno coming to you live from the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez all along the border on a Friday night saying good night on the Valley Sports Network Good night ladies and gentlemen <laughs>